Hi everyone. In this video, I just want to show you really quickly how to read a burette. So I've got my burette over here on the left, and this is what we kind of use for titrations. And for our burette, we have different um, indicator markings, and because we're measuring volume, these are likely going to be in milliliters, unless you're told otherwise. So for example, and some of them are always going to be labeled. So for example, on this burette, we've got the 10 milliliter line right here, the 20 milliliter line right there, 30 milliliter line, and so on. Okay, and so you're going to notice that the numbers are kind of going top down. And that's because your volume is also going to be going top down. Because as we add more liquid into our titration, that volume is going to decrease. So the first measurement that you're going to take is going to be your initial volume. The second one's going to be your final volume. And the difference between those is the total amount of volume that you added. Okay, so let's talk about how to get those volumes. So we're always going to measure. So first we're going to look and see like, oh, look, here's our liquid. And where's our air? Okay, and it should be, you know, kind of colorful, etc. Um, so, and you know, just like measuring in a measuring cup. And you might notice that this has a slight curve to it. And that's because water has this capacity to kind of creep up the sides. And so the standard is you always measure from the bottom of what's called the meniscus. So right here is the bottom of the meniscus, the bottom of the curve. You measure from there. Okay, and the next thing is we got to figure out what the different lines that aren't labeled are so that we can get a nice accurate measurement. So looking and each burette is going to be just a little bit different, but it's nothing you can't figure out because you can absolutely do this. It's just like reading a ruler. Okay, so like when we're reading a ruler, it goes from maybe zero and then if we had 10 here and 20 there and maybe this is in centimeters you know that immediately between 10 and 20, that would be 5, oh, sorry, 15, and between 0 and 10, that'd be 5, okay? So it's the same thing here, but we just flipped it up on its on its end so that the 0 is at the top and the 20 is at the bottom and the 10s here, and this would be 15, and this would be 5. You know, so it's, it's the exact same thing going from the top down. Just think of it like a number line. So here we see 10 at the top and we see 20 here, and the value is going to be immediately in between. So we're really looking right about here in this purple pen color to find the bottom of the meniscus, and that's the volume that we need. Okay, so we know this number is going to be between 10 and 20 because of the numbers that were given to us on the burette. Immediately between 10 and 20, we see this big mark and it's really safe to say that that is the number that's immediately between 10 and 20. That's going to be 15. And if we look, we see one, two, three, four dashes between 10 and 15. So each one of those is probably going to be one milliliter. So this is one. So this would actually measure one, 11 milliliters, then 12 milliliters, 13, 14, and 15. And it all adds up. So then. After that would be 16, 17. Oh, and if we zoom in even closer, between 17 and 18, that's where the meniscus is going to be. So now we need a number between 17 and 18. So the bottom of the meniscus is right here. And to me, that looks like it's a little bit more towards 18 than 17, like a little bit more than halfway. So I know this is going to be a, maybe a little bit more than 17.5. So my guesstimation is going to be 17 point maybe 7 milliliters. And if you said 17.6, you wouldn't necessarily be wrong because the last digit is going to be your estimate. Okay, so to sum it all up, what are our steps to read a burette? Number one, we are going to look at the numbers provided, the numbers and lines provided. So look at the numbers on the line, on the burette. Two, we're going to determine the divisions. So what is each line worth? So 
So I'm just going to scooch up a little bit. Determine the division value. Where'd it go? There it is. Determine the division value. And then three, we are going to measure MEA, measure from the bottom of the meniscus, from the bottom of that curve. I hope that helps. Happy chemistry.